Tacos should not be limited to Tuesdays because they are freaking delicious, especially birria tacos. Oh my God, I said that right. <laughs> They are absolutely incredible. You've got the pulled meat inside a tortilla that has been crispened up on a hot plate. But I haven't seen anyone do it on a Weber kettle. So today I am cooking these on the Weber kettle and I have this cracking accessory for the job. As soon as I saw the Dutch oven, I knew it would be perfect for this recipe. We're going to braise our meat inside the pot here. You could cook stews, casseroles, but what I really love is the hot plate here. The lid that doubles as a hot plate, we're going to pop our tortillas on here at the end with some of that fat from the meat juices cooking away. Get our tortillas nice and crispy. It is going to be uber delicious. Now it's time to set up our barbecue. We'll get that lit and then set up for two zone cooking. This isn't a barbecuer's back scratcher. <laughs> this is a charcoal rake and they work so well. Check it out. So what we're doing here is creating two separate cooking zones, one direct heat and one indirect heat. The next step is to add the base of our Dutch oven to the barbecue over the coals to preheat it. Now we just need to put the lid on and wait 10 minutes. There's a reason why I love burriat. Bur far out. Burriat. Burriat. <laughs> Tacos. Because it is 100% acceptable to dip your taco into the meat juice broth. It is absolutely delicious, packed full of flavor, but to get that flavor, we first need to marinate our meat. So I have a really quick marinade we're going to put together. So the first and probably key ingredient in this recipe is chipotle chilies in adobo sauce. I know lots of recipes have different kinds of chilies, which can be hard to get in Australia. So this is a great option and available at most supermarkets. It has a really nice, smoky, spicy flavor. So we're just adding in three heaped tablespoons. The next ingredient is five cloves of garlic that I've just finely chopped. Pop that in and then onto some more spices. So I've got ground cumin, smoked paprika, and then of course salt and pepper. And then the last ingredient, some olive oil. Now we'll just give that a quick mix. This looks wonderful already. Those beautiful chipotle chilies and garlic smell so good. Now it's onto the meat. Look at this. So I have chosen chuck and beef short rib. So I like chuck because it's easy to get your hands on. It melts really easily, pulls really nice. It's got that beautiful fat running through it. But then I've also chosen beef rib because it holds together better. It gives you that structural difference when you're eating it. It's also got that really flavorful meat right by the bone and that extra fat too. Delicious. So I'm just going to chop these up into cubes and then add it into our marinade. These are individual beef ribs that still have the bone in there, so we're just going to cut that out so we can chop our meat into roughly the same size cubes so it cooks at the same rate as the chuck there. Chop that away and then cut this into those delicious chunks. Look at that, all our meat is all chopped up. Now I do have these bones left. It's probably a good idea that I throw them onto the barbecue at the same time. Let's cook them, smoke them, I'll pop them into the freezer for next time I make stock. Now we can just go in with our meat and mix that all about. Now that we've got all our pieces evenly coated, marinate this as long as you can. Even overnight would be absolutely incredible for those flavors to infuse. We are going in with extra smoky flavors. I'm adding some wood chips to our charcoal. So we've soaked these in water for half an hour so they'll just smoke and smolder, giving us beautiful smoky flavors all over the beef. The key to the depth of flavor in any stew, casserole or cold meat is getting that browning on the meat first. So I've decided to make the best of both worlds and grill some meat over direct heat over the coals so the fats and juices are dripping down, creating smoke, flavor, delicious but then I've also popped some in our Dutch oven base, so then that can start to caramelize in there and then we'll have a really nice flavor at the bottom of the base. After a couple of minutes, flip the meat over. We want that browning on both sides. Now that our meat has beautifully browned, we can take it off the heat. We just need to shimmy the Dutch oven back over direct heat to get some heat back in there to brown up our onions. Now that our onion has cooked and softened, we can go straight back in with our meat and all the rest of the ingredients. Now that the meat's in the pot, we need to add some flavorful liquids. So first we're going in with some tinned tomato. I always like to use really good quality crushed tomato here. Add in some beef stock. I always like to go salt reduced so then I can control the level of salt at the end of the dish. Next, some dried oregano. And then we can go in with a cinnamon stick and some bay leaves. 
And then for a bit of extra liquid, because we need that broth at the end, just pop in some water. Now that all the liquid is warm inside our Dutch oven, it is time to pop this lid on and then we're going to slide it over in direct heat to let it cook away at indirect medium temperature, about 180 to 200, and it will cook away for about four hours. Probably about halfway mark. Check on your fuel though. You wanna hold those temperatures so you may need a little top up. We're at the four hour mark and it smells so good. I know there's a little bit of effort in this recipe, so that's why we're making a big batch for a big feed. Let's check it out. Oh, look at that. That beef is absolutely melting apart and those juices have turned absolutely liquid amazing. So our Dutch oven has done a fantastic job, but now I'm going to use this lid, pop it back over direct heat and this will become our hot plate for our tortillas in a moment. If I was serving this just as pulled meat, I would shred this in with all that wonderful juice. But for birria tacos, what we want to do is separate the meat from the juice. So I'm going to strain this into one of my bowls, keep the meat aside, we'll shred that, and then in the other bowl we'll have all that beautiful juice and a layer of fat. So I've just got a pair of tongs, I'll pop this into the sieve, let some juice drip off, and then we'll move it over to our next bowl. And if you spot those bay leaves and cinnamon stick, you can pull that out now. Look at this, we have our beautiful shredded meat. I actually didn't shred it at all, it just fell apart but I can still see some chunks of that beef rib that have held together and then onto our meat juice. So our fat has separated a bit from our meat juice, which is perfect. Now we just wanna take some of that fat off because what we're going to do is dip our tortilla into it and then pop the tortilla onto the hot plate. Look at that liquid gold. This is where the fun begins. I mean, I've been having fun this whole time, but this is where it really begins because we are going to assemble these tortillas. I've got some grated cheese, four cheese melt, I think this one is, so you've got lots of flavour in there. I've got some coriander and some white onion, not to be confused with brown onion, this is white onion. It's not as astringent and oniony, it's a little bit sweeter in flavour. So, tortilla. First, we need to dip our tortillas into that beautiful golden fat. Then we can add them onto the griddle, we can hear that sizzle straight away. And then we're going to layer on with our grated cheese. We can pop the meat onto one half of the tortilla and then we'll top that with a little bit of onion and a little bit of coriander. So we're going to cook them for about three minutes or until the underneath of that tortilla is beautifully golden and crispy. Look at that, they look absolutely incredible. That tortilla has gone golden and uber crunchy and that cheese has completely melted. Now we can fold it in half and take them off the barbecue and pop them onto a serving platter. These look freaking delish, I am so excited. So I still have this meat juice, the precious meat juice, our dipping sauce. Pour that in, we won't forget about that. Yum. Top it with a little onion and coriander because apparently that's what you're supposed to do. There's a reason why I wore short sleeves today and that is because I need lots of space to do this. Oh yes. This is in freaking insane. This like melting meat with all this meat juiciness wrapped up in a crunchy tortilla. This is dangerous. In my haste to get these in my gob, I forgot the lime, but I still have five tortillas to go, so it's not too late. Yum. Uh oh, hi, all right. <laughs> 